Finding the least annoying smart lock is no easy task. Some of them are really loud and some don't even work when you come back from a run. There are a lot of features I tested, including some you might be overlooking. So let's compare eight smart locks to find the least annoying and best for you. First is the Schley Connect, which I reviewed on the channel six years ago. Apparently my focus wasn't locked on. Get it? Locked? Anyways, there are a few things I still love about this lock. The keypad does a great job at not showing fingerprints and the buttons are easy to press. Plus, you don't have to hit the enter button after typing in the code. Some might not like that feature because it tells the person at the door how long the code is, but I like it for convenience. The Schley Connect is one of the easiest locks to install and it's built like a tank. There's even an alarm you can enable if someone's trying to break in and it's pretty loud. Speaking of loud, this lock is noisy when it opens and closes. There are a few other downsides too. The interior part is really big compared to some of the others. And the buttons can be difficult to see in the dark unless you press the top Schlage button on top. But you know, visitors might not know to do this. Those are all minor. What I really like about this lock is that it uses Z-Wave, which makes it very reliable and have long battery life. That means you will need a hub that uses Z-Wave like SmartThings, Hubitat, or I connected it to a home assistant with a Z-Wave USB stick and it worked great. But for temporary codes, you might need to do some extra work to add that to your hub. I also like that you can connect it to your Ring Alarm base station since it uses Z-Wave as well. And you can unlock the door while talking to someone on the Ring doorbell, so that's pretty cool and useful. If you want a reliable lock that will last you a really long time, like as long as you live in the house, the Schley Connect is a great option. Next is the Quickset 916, which also uses Z-Wave, so it has the same benefits like working with the Ring base station. But there's only one key reason to get this over the Schlage, and that's, well, the physical key. If you already have Quickset locks around your house, you can continue using your old house keys even if you upgrade to this lock. You use the little tool included with the lock and it's extremely easy to rekey your lock to use the old key. I love it! Besides that though, I have a lot of issues with this lock. It was the most difficult lock to install by, by a long shot. You have to deal with these little screws and if you wanna make changes to the lock, you have to remove those small screws to pull off the cover, which hides the physical switches that configure the settings. I mean, why quick set, why? The screen shows fingerprints and to fix the problem, they have two numbers appear before you type in the code. So you spread the fingerprints randomly, but I don't like the extra step and the keys are difficult to press. It's also the loudest lock and it sounds like grinding motors inside. So unless your spouse approval factor mandates that your old house keys work with your new smart lock, I would skip this one. So what if Z-Wave isn't your thing? Well, the Schlagen code is a really good option since it uses Wi-Fi. You don't need a hub or anything plugged in nearby, but battery life does take a hit. It's very easy to control it using the Schlage app where you can add temporary codes and modify all the settings. There's also an alarm, but it's much quieter and I doubt it would actually scare anyone off. The keypad is similar to the Z-Wave Schlage Connect version, but the back is much smaller and it's way more quiet. They definitely improved the design over the years. Well, oh, sorry, oh, I guess my script was written in caps lock. Ugh, moving on. It still has a lot of the same benefits as the Connect, where it's really easy to install and it's extremely well made. There's a lot that goes into if a smart lock is secure, but it's good to know that all of the Schlage locks have the highest security grade. So it doesn't have all the bells and whistles like a fingerprint sensor, but if you want an easy to use lock that doesn't need a hub, check out the Schlage code. Another lock that does have all the bells and whistles is the Lockly Secure Pro. This also uses Wi-Fi, but you have to plug in the included bridge. Lockly is unique because of their feature called Pin Genie. The numbers always change positions, so you don't have to worry if fingerprints are left on it or if someone looks over your shoulder since the numbers are grouped together. It's very cool. The problem is you have to hit that middle circle button after typing in the code and it's not very intuitive. There's also a fingerprint sensor on the side and it works pretty well. I tested it with a little water on my finger and it didn't work. So if you're sweaty from a run, you might just have to use a code. It's really easy to add temporary codes to the Lockly app and you can even add offline access codes. 
So you don't even need the internet for those to work, which is unique to Lockley and it's pretty cool. Not to body shame, but I think it's the biggest lock out of all the locks in this video, but it's actually pretty quiet. There's even a door sensor built in so the lock knows if the door is open or closed. Seriously, this is locked and loaded. It's not compatible with hubs like Home Assistant or SmartThings, so keep that in mind, but if you want a unique lock with a lot of cool features, this could be it. All right, so if you like the fingerprint sensor, but you want Z-Wave for more compatibility, then check out UltraLock. It's nice and compact because it hides the spot for the key right behind it. Tricky, I like it. The buttons are physical buttons that are easy to press, but you do have to click the UltraLock button on the bottom after typing in the code. This might be confusing for visitors. The fingerprint sensor is not that great. It didn't work with any kind of water on my finger, and sometimes it just didn't recognize my finger. Others have had issues with the fingerprint sensor too, so it might not just be me. And I tried adding the lock to my Z-Wave hub without downloading the app, but I was only able to put it into pairing mode with the app, so that was a little disappointing. The app is easy to use though, and you can generate temporary codes. It's a little noisy, but it's not the worst offender. And I'm not sure why the little light is flashing blue. I couldn't turn it off, so that feature must be locked down. But if you really want a fingerprint sensor on a Z-Wave lock, this might be your only option. Personally, I would take no fingerprint sensor over one that doesn't work well. Okay, this next lock looks like you're bolting a brick onto your door. It's the Acara U100. Don't let the blocky design fool you though. This has a lot of great features and is the least expensive lock in this video. It has a fingerprint sensor that's pretty fast and is the only one that worked if my hand was sweaty, so that's great to see. The buttons are really easy to press, but you have to hit the lock button with the small check in the corner after typing the code. Kinda confusing. The Acara U100 supports Apple's home key, so you can bring your iPhone or Apple Watch up to it and it just opens. This is so convenient if you have Apple devices, and if you connect it to an Acara hub, it will support Matter, and that opens the door to so many more options. And the lock is very quiet when opening and closing. To replace the batteries, there's this difficult plastic cover that you have to pop off, and it feels kind of cheap, and I hate it. But the front hides the key behind a metal plate, and that is solid. And it was easy to add temporary codes to the Acara app. If you want a great fingerprint sensor, have Apple Home Key, Matter, and want to save some money, then this could be it. Now here's a lock that I'm currently using on my front door, the Schlage Encode Plus. It's great if you do like the idea of Apple Home Key, but want a more traditional lock company. And I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about the Encode Plus because it's very similar to the Schlage Encode, but I will say the setup process was the easiest thing I've ever done. Seriously, it's so easy. I press the pairing button and then just tap my phone on the back of the lock and it connected everything for me. I didn't have to scan anything and it just felt magical for how easy it was. Using Apple Home Key has been way more convenient than I thought it would be. I mainly use my smart lock when I go running so it's easy to open when I get back. I don't have to deal with sweaty fingers on a fingerprint sensor or shaky hands trying to type in a code. Plus, I didn't have to force my wife Allie to memorize a lock code or register her fingerprint. I just added her phone to Apple Home Key. It's super easy. The Encode Plus is expensive, so I don't think it's the best lock for everyone, and definitely not if you're not locked in to Apple. The last lock on this list is the Yale Assure 2, and what's unique about this lock is that you can choose how you want to connect it to your smart home. I picked the Z-Wave version and in the box was this little Z-Wave module that I insert. The modules don't add that much price when you buy it bundled with the lock, but if you buy the modules separately, they are expensive, like almost as much as the lock. So I wouldn't really consider upgrading the modules down the road. I would just lock that idea away and throw away the key. But there are some features I really like about this lock. First, the size. It's so compact and small, and in my opinion, it's the best looking lock out of any in this video. The front is so small because I got the keyless version. Sorry, lock picking lawyer. And it's not loud either. The lock has this unique feature when installing it to make it super easy. There are these metal rods that hold the back plate in place, so you don't have to hold it while adding the screws. It's genius. Installing the hardware was extremely easy because of that but setting up the lock in the app, eh, wasn't the best. 
Plus the buttons on the touchscreen model were a little difficult to press. I haven't tried the other version, but it might be better. And you have to hit the check mark after the code is entered. It's something you might like or not like. There's also no fingerprint sensor, home key, or any of that stuff. And even though I could add codes in the Yale app, I couldn't have them work on a schedule. Said I needed a smart module like a Z-Wave one, which was installed, so I'm not sure what's going on. It does work with the Ring Hub if you have the Z-Wave version, but I mainly like how compact it is, making it less of an eyesore inside and outside the door. This lock is similar to the Nest Yale lock, and if you're in the Google ecosystem, I would probably get that one instead. Now, real quick, before I let you know my favorites, I want to share why I left out certain locks like August. My main requirement behind closed doors is that the lock has to have a built-in keypad. None of this detached keypad stuff where it can get lost, stolen, battery dies, none of that. Also, I didn't want any locks in this comparison to have a camera. That brings in too many factors to compare and maybe that could be a separate video. I know that there are other good locks out there, but I wanted to pick ones that I would consider buying. So here are my favorites out of all the ones in this video. If you have an Airbnb and you're setting up temporary codes all the time, and you want a lock that's really easy for guests to use, I would get the Schlage Encode. Not the plus, but the less expensive one. It uses Wi-Fi, so no hub is needed, and it's just so easy. If you really want a fingerprint sensor lock, Akara has the best fingerprint sensor and is the most compatible with Matter. But if you have a cabin or a place with unreliable or no internet, Lockly has the best offline access for guests available, and so many little extras that other locks don't have. If you want everything to work locally and you don't want to worry about the lock company staying in business years down the road, I recommend the Z-Wave Schley Connect or the Yale Assure 2 Z-Wave version. I lean towards the Yale Assure 2 Z-Wave because it's smaller and more quiet than the Schley Connect, but they are both fantastic locks. And since my family uses iPhones, the Schlage Code Plus is the best fit for our family's front door. It's fast, easy to use, and looks good. If we didn't use iPhones, I would use the Yale Assure 2 with Z-Wave. I hope this video is helpful in choosing a lock. All of them are linked below, and thanks for watching. And don't let the door hit you on the way out. Oh, hey, do you think I locked in enough puns for this video? I don't think you want to know my real opinion. My lips are locked. Hey, good one. You unlock some new ideas. I just had to open my mind to see what's possible. Reed, snap out of it! No, 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 I just need the right combination. I'm serious. I'll put you in a headlock. Ooh, great one. You know the key to my heart.